Hey everybody, welcome to Digging Deeper Jazz. I'm Jeff Antoniak. Well, okay, so I wanna talk about phrasing today. This is one of the most important things for a novice player, but also one of the hippest things that a pro, that a really advanced player could do. So whatever, whatever ability level you're at, hang out. We're gonna talk about this and I'm gonna give you some good stuff to work on. And uh, in just a little bit, I'm going to announce the winner for a special giveaway we did. What's that? Uh, what giveaway, Jeff? Oh, well, let me tell you. We have 10,000 subscribers on YouTube now. That's pretty cool. I'm pretty proud of that. When I started doing Digging Deeper, we had three subscribers. So um, I did sort of a little video announcement to the subscribers. And of those folks, um, I offered a free giveaway just for those people that watched that little 90 second video over the last couple of days. We had a pile of people enter and uh, I'm gonna tell you who won in just a moment. Okay, let's talk about this phrasing stuff. What is phrasing? Phrasing is how long do you talk and how long are you quiet? That's about it. So how long are you playing before you end an idea? So how we phrase in the English language, right? You can say short, punchy sentences. How you doing, Jeff? Fine. Okay, that has an emotion to it. <laughs> Those one word answers, right? Or someone who's very excited the answer to the question might be 75 words long with 10 commas in it. Phrasing, phrasing is really powerful. It tells you a lot about the emotion of what's going on. So phrasing is also, when you listen to a little kid talking and they're practically hyperventilating, <gasps> right? They, they get all excited. Okay, you need to chill them out. Their phrasing's a little screwed up. And so for a novice player, lots of times I hear this, that if, when I straighten out somebody's phrasing very quickly, very easily, we're gonna do that right away, all of a sudden they sound so much more coherent, like they know what they're talking about, because they actually do, straightening out the phrasing. Then for uh, an advanced person to continue on with the analogy, I don't know if you know this, I kind of like analogies, um, for a public speaker, somebody who is going in front of 10,000 people trying to keep their attention, Varying your phrase lengths is one of the things that we are coached to do. Shorter sentences, in between sentences, longer sentences. So managing your phrasing really has a lot to do with how things uh, land. So take a look at this PDF and let's jump into it. So the first thing I wanna do is show you, uh, we're gonna use the blues as a point of departure and I wanna see, can we do two measure phrasing? Can you say a short little sentence, five or six word sentence in music, right? Can we say this and stop? And can you say another one and stop? And can you say another one? Is this gonna be the greatest, you know, interesting phrasing or greatest solo? No, but it lets me know you can control an idea and have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Let me play an example of what I'm talking about here. So I'm gonna play some blues, and I'm gonna play a bunch of two measure phrases. All right, so I hope you could hear that phrasing. So it was very clear, very repetitive. Here's a sentence. Here's another sentence. Here's another sentence. Maybe it related to the last sentence or not. And so I was just giving you great sentences. I understand the language. I understand the syntax. I understand the grammar. I can pronounce the words. Here I go, here I go, here I go. That is where a lot of novices kind of fall down is we're just so wrapped up with the chords and the vocabulary we have and playing the instrument and the fingerings and the air, you know, the million things we have to think about is most folks play run-on sentences. And that's what it is. We just kind of get going and we just nervously keep making music. Phrasing's all jacked up. So can you make clear two measure phrases? Now here's one thing that, you know, I think what you heard me do is clear. What may not have been clear is a two-measure phrase is not two measures of music. 
it's like a measure and a half. It might just be a measure and then a little bit, but there's always that rest. How do you know when I'm done this sentence? Because there's space at the end, right? How do you know when I'm done that phrase? There's space at the end. So a two measure phrase might only be five or six beats of actual sound and then two or three beats of a rest. That's what lets the, the audience know, oh, they just told me something and they're done. Got it, cool, big deal. So that right there, I want everybody to give that a try, including the pros. That's harder to do than you think it is. Okay, so let's actually pause here. Um, like I said, 10,000 subscribers, I'm thrilled with it. Um, I'm gonna keep doing these Digging Deeper videos. Uh, I get so much out of presenting the information and I just hear back from people constantly about how much they're enjoying it and how helpful it is. That's wonderful. Those people then join us at jazzwire.net and that's that's the best. So Jazzwire is the subscription website that uh, that I run. We have hundreds of people from all over the world and so we have a new member. So I gave away a uh, six month subscription to Jazzwire, which is worth $300. People who come in do an evaluation. I listen to them play. I listen to a recording and I evaluate their playing, give them a specific personal practice plan. That's 75 bucks, $375 value. It's Michael Walsh from Australia, which is very hip. So Michael is a uh, saxophonist and a flute player. We've got a bunch of people on Jazzwire from Australia. So this is fantastic. So, uh, so we got another Aussie, that's fantastic. So for those of you that didn't win, I really wanna get you at Jazzwire. The standard thing that I hear after somebody joins Jazzwire about three weeks in, they're like, I have no idea why I was procrastinating. I've heard about Jazzwire, I've been watching Digging Deeper for two years. And I have no idea, this is all, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I want you to pull the trigger and join us at Jazzwire. All right, let's get back to this phrasing stuff. So if you can do those short little two measure phrases, now let's do something that's perhaps a little more typical is a four measure phrase. So sometimes we can just link two two measure phrases together. It's like a little bit of a sentence, comma, the rest of the sentence. I was walking down the road and I saw a dog. Those could each be little sentences, but I put them together and made a more mature thought. Pretty mature thought, right, about the dog and everything. I thought that was cool too. All right, so let me try playing some blues and I'm gonna play four measure phrases. How much music is in a four measure phrase? Not four measures. So I might play three measures and leave a measure of silence or three and a half. So be listening for that. measure phrases. So again, um, those of you with like some real jazz experience, intermediate players are going to find this challenging. You really are. Um, many of you play too, a little too long. I, I hear this. It's not that people are playing too short. They're playing too long. And this is after listening to thousands of students auditioning to come to Maryland Summer Jazz or Jazz Wire or all kinds of stuff. Like having heard thousands of people um, this is what I hear is they go a little bit too long. They go into the fifth or sixth measure and then they start something else and then they start something and before long, they're actually lost. They don't know where they are in the form of the tune. Ring a bell, right? So when we get lost in the changes, people think it's a chord changes problem. It's a phrasing problem. It's totally a phrasing problem. It has nothing to do with what you're playing or what the chords are or what the song is or what the tempo is. It's a stopping and starting problem. We can fix so much with this. So give that a try. Don't just listen to it and move on. Stop, give this a try, four measure phrases. Okay, so that's a big deal. Now, when you can do those four measure phrases, you sound like you know what the heck you're doing. That sounds like real jazz. Okay, so now the last one is uh, where it gets interesting. Now, if all we do is do four measure phrases, um, it's like that orator giving a speech and every sentence 
is 17 words long, 17 words, words long. And we're not counting the words in their sentences, but at some point, it gets to be, there's a sameness, and we know what to expect. And at some point, our brain starts to check out because we know what's coming, right? So a great jazz musician will vary their phrases. So this is something that pros do. And this can make you sound more different than the coolest lick I could show you right now is this idea of getting control of your phrasing one and then learning to vary it. So for a novice or an intermediate, experiment with this, but this is not what you want to do. Um, for the advanced players, this will be something cool to do. So the idea of can you force yourself to play over the bar line? And maybe you've heard people talk about playing over the bar line. What does that mean? It's really sort of over the phrase line would be sort of a better way to put it. So four measure phrases are typical. So I want you to get good at typical. But then what we start doing is breaking the rule. So I want you to say that short, punchy sentence that surprises people. Then I want you to say the excited, run-on sentence that goes past where everyone thinks you should end. Wow, that's interesting. It, uh, it makes them lean in and uh, wonder what's happening next. You're an artist, that's your job, is to make people lean in and wonder what's happening next. So um, let me do this, I'll do an example. This is supposed to be sort of random phrasing, but I wrote it out so you can have a sense. So I'm gonna be following along here. So I'm gonna play a two measure phrase. Then I'm gonna play a three measure phrase across the phrase line. Then I'm gonna play a four measure phrase, then a one measure phrase, then a three measure phrase, which carries me across into the next chorus, then another three measure phrase, and then I'll just sort of go from there. So the idea is I'm not starting and stopping where you, where you expect me to, where you think I should. And that is like, that's watching a movie where you don't really know what's going to happen next. That can be a drag because the director is a total lunatic, or that can be very cool if the director lets you know you're in good hands, but don't get too comfortable. Something's coming. That's great. So let me play an example of this for you. So what did you think about that last one, the phrasing on that? Um, very different, right? So did it sound weird? Did it sound atypical? Did it sound bad? Did it sound cool? Well, that gets to be subjective. Here's the thing. Listen back to the two measure phrases. Listen back to the four measure phrases. Listen back to that. And I guarantee they sounded different. They had a different vibe, there was a different emotion, a different sense of control, a different sense of what's expected. That is a big deal. And you can make that happen this afternoon. I could give you a new lick, and it could take you a month if you ever work it into your playing, right? I, I could teach you some new harmony, it could be a new melodic thing, a new scale, a new pattern, whatever. Phrasing is king, phrasing is where Phrasing will make you sound better immediately, and it can make you sound modern immediately. It's a really, really big deal. So get to work on your phrasing, and I will see you next time.